It is the summer solstice, the night of the Druids. The year is 2007. George W. Bush is President of the United States. Americans are discovering the Internet and registering shock at the behavior of certain Hollywood tarts. This night will change the life of one of sports' greatest stars, an athlete, an animal trainer, and an ambassador of goodwill from the world of testosterone. Mel Hall Jr., the rebel Yankee. This week's Yankeeography. This is Port Byron, a sleepy, time-forgotten village in upstate New York. Here, each dawn, the fishermen sail out along the former barge canal, now bone dry, while their wives await their return. Here, young Mel Hall is forged into an athlete and quixotic, some would say Quixotic, leader of men. At age 18, Mel signs with a rising baseball elite, the Chicago Cubs. And soon the winds of the windy city are blowing over the handsome young cub with the fierce bat and the fielder's mitt that he has mysteriously labeled Lucille. Some say the mystery mitt is named for a girl. Some say, no, Lucille is his mom. But this is unlikely because Mel's mother is not named Lucille. Some say it's comedian Lucille Ball. And some say... Lucille Teasdale, a great but obscure Canadian physician. It is probably not Lucille Teasdale. After four years, Mel moves to Cleveland and then to New York where he becomes the Big Apple's brightest seed. But the fame and fortune of Gotham brings a price. Mel is chased down by autograph hounds and bedded down nightly by adoring nymphettes seeking to avoid more attention. Mel begins walking his two pet cougars through the streets of Manhattan. These brief moments of peace come to an end when authorities, perhaps threatened by Mel's popularity, crack down and remove the animals. Mel finds refuge with his 16-year-old girlfriend and becomes a hit at her high school prom. But then Mel makes the mistake of showing his firearms to some reporters right in the locker room. The media lackeys betray him, revealing his secret, isolating Mel from his teammates. Then trouble arrives in the form of a mouthy punk named Bernie Williams. When the hoodlum pushes Mel, Mel pushes back. He calls Williams Mr. Zero and says constantly, Shut up, Zero. 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 But Zero does not shut up. In fact, he takes Mel's job. Mel's woes deepen. Creditors repossess his 17 motorcycles. In 1990, with his cougars gone and his girlfriend trying out for varsity volleyball, Mel's RBI totals fall to 46. That's a career low. By 1992, he has had enough. Mel Hall signs to play in Japan. After three years in the land of the rising sun, Mel Hall retires, his career ranking statistically beside the great Red Sox legend Troy O'Leary. And the events of June 21st, 2007, the summer solstice, shall not tarnish the image of Mel Hall Jr., Yankee Rebel, this week's Yankeeography.